Welcome to episode 31 of the Venture Ventures D and D live play, actual play, whatever the proper term is. You know what we're doing. We're playing D and D five E. Happy Mother's Day to all the wonderful mothers out there, and pet mothers, and whatever whatever type of mother there is. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, I am Jake Friday, your dungeon master for today. And um, special guest today, Jess Pack, author of The Tale of Two Sphinxes, the only Tier 4 module that appears in the first volume of the Uncaged Anthology. Highly recommend that anthology. It's fun and uh, subverts a lot of traditional tropes. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Previously on Venture Ventures, the group got in a fight with some weirdo manticore monster slash chimera slash another manticore uh the group was joined by nema played by cynthia marie the group entered the town of felix where they discovered that it is populated by golems constructs and other similar creatures uh everyone in town also happened to worship felix tricknips the inventor and uh philanthropist nema jumped in and out of shadows a bunch searched the big bedfellows for loot i assume never got to the bottom of why she did that and uh witnessed more zealous practices by the townsfolk and i have in my notes here hey zealousy but i'm not going to sing it and put you guys through that um then we um the leader of the cult informed that Inform them that Felix has a lab off the coast near a petrified kraken tentacle. And that's where Iris the Warforged Assassin prototype that is powered by a piece of the rod of seven parts was heading. And um, then the ocean bubbled a little bit. And that's where we left off. Okay. Um, so a lot of the townsfolk are uh, in a bit of a uproar over this um, excitement from the ocean. It's still bubbling, and it is going in the general direction. It is in the general direction of um, where that tentacle is coming out of. You can't see the tentacle right now. Um, it is the morning. Uh, that's where you guys were heading anyways, so... Uh, what would you like to do, I assume, before you head over there? Well, I would like to ask uh, whoever had said, like, there's a message from the sea. Um, just to give them an ask that, uh, have you, have you received a message from Felix and Sea Home before? Or is this the, the oh. first time it's done this? Oh, no, we have not received a message ever. This is it's so, just... so this this might not be a message. This might just be something's happening over there where where that where I the the holy one Iris where she went. The holy one went there, and it it most definitely we believe it's a message. And um, the creature who uh, is a flesh golem uh, says to you guys and looks at fellow townsfolk who are kind of looking at you guys and looking at the boiling area of the ocean. Uh, but like like you found out last episode, uh, it was... These folks don't have the perspective you uh, mm -hmm. would like. Right, sure, sure. I, I, I'm just, I'm just saying. Maybe it's a message. We'll, we'll go. Actually, we'll go figure out what it is. It, I'm just saying it might be a, a big sea monster with really bad gas. It's entirely possible. So, so temper your expectations a little bit, maybe, and sure. uh, maybe we'll be back and we can, and we can fill you in on what the, what the message might be. Should we hide from the gas? That's a great idea. You should really head indoors. That's a solid plan. Okay, everyone. Indoors. Underground. Gather blankets. And, uh... Great, great move. We'll tell the gas that you went that way. Good call, Friday. Good call. 
and you can see a little confusion on its face. It's, but it doesn't um, bother to ask about that. And um, okay, got that. So uh, you head over to the tentacle, um, and it's a winding cliffside trail, a uh, little less than ten feet wide. You don't need to do any sort of acrobatics, dexterity checks to make sure you don't fall off the cliff because uh, especially with this group, everyone's pretty good in that area. There's no clumsy folks. Uh, approaching the tentacle, it is huge. It is um, the biggest, obviously the biggest tentacle you've ever seen. It may be the biggest once living organic thing you've you've seen come out of coming out of the ocean and you can't see how far it goes down uh but it looks like it's attached into the cliff uh buried a certain amount you don't know how far in uh and you see a trail that leads up to it and on your way it kind of goes under the tentacle you see uh a tiefling in euphoria you want to Describe what she looks like. Uh, yeah, so you see a seafoam green uh, tiefling with medium wavy uh, gray hair. Um, she has uh, horns, but it appears that they've been uh, broken. Uh, the right one more so than the left one. Um, and she's just kind of dressed in like typical adventuring gear. And uh, I guess she would be talking to herself. Euphoria, be careful. There's, there's, adventuring group. It, it seems like, what, are they gonna kill you? Honey, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't see anybody here. Look around. Uh, you guys see her, uh, kind of, um, looking up towards the tentacle. Um, and Euphoria, when you turn around, you do see a uh, Kenku uh, walking towards you. And behind him is a mouse folk, which is a mouse person. Oh, she's she's for sure on my shoulder. Oh, she's on top of a... She's not here, so this entire episode, she's hanging out on my shoulder. <laughs> That's what she gets. <laughs> this is what happens. She's like your parrot now. Uh, exactly. But much, much more fierce and cute. Uh, Crispy, why don't you go ahead and describe what he looks like for... Um, sure, I, I sound much like I... Right, I look much like I sound. Got the full, uh, full-brimmed full cowboy hat, a whip hanging on one side of my belt, a flail on the other, and a bow across my back. Other than that, I'm just wearing a light leather vest, some cotton clothes, pretty slim pickings with a, with a bag slung over my shoulder as well. Uh, and then, yeah, a mouse, uh on my shoulder she's adorable quite adorable and has a i'm not sure if the scimitar is on her back probably on her back i don't know we'll say it's on her back uh we'll say it's a very small scimitar <laughs> yeah exactly uh but um when you get closer closer euphoria you can see that it's pretty uh nice scimitar and dave why don't you describe what Prodi looks like um, <clears throat> Prati's approximately, uh, four feet tall. Um, he is a crow with arms. He's got very, uh, scruffy feathers and he's in a, he's in a cloak. Um, and you can see him kind of brushing his feathers and straightening them out. Um, and he just gives you a little, little wave. Orson at that point goes... Oh, hello! How are you? Hello! Saying to you, uh, Euphoria. And you see another human who looks... Which is, he's shouting from the back of the group. Yeah. The person greeting you. <laughs> he looks like a farmer. Uh, whatever that view, that uh, depiction gives you, is exactly what Orson looks like. Uh... What do you do, Euphoria? 
Um, so I'm just gonna make a, a small comment to Gurgle Mice. Oh, I can take them if there's any trouble. <laughs> they okay. don't frighten me none. <laughs> All right, I wish I was there, but the stupid dry heart. I I hate hearts. Just be careful. I promise I won't touch anything cursed. No hearts. Remember that we <laughs> yeah no hearts definitely no hearts. Um. And then, like, she'll just stop and just go, hi. Oh, How y'all doing? A green tieflin. I, I can't reckon I've ever seen a, a green tieflin before. That's that's a new color for me. It looks mighty fine. Now, are you a follower of Felix heading to his home as well? I saw you looking up at that uh, that tentacle there. Oh, I'm, I'm not really from around here. I'm trying to find him because I have a friend in a certain predicament if you will and i heard uh felix might be able to help with that <laughs> so i'm this just trying to figure possible. out how to how to get in to his abode to you know have a meeting with him well, go, uh, you see Prati kind of go Caw! and he points to your to your uh to his where horns would be like Caw! I messed with something much bigger than myself, and that's the price I paid. Also, Prady, I, I might be a little uh, personal, jumping <laughs> jumping right into. You, you can, I don't think you can just ask about a tiefling's horns. That's. I. Uh, isn't that uncouth? <laughs> I normally don't. Uh, don't. You know, go through the regular rigmarole of uh, you know, polite. You know, small talk. I just go right to the to the main. That is, I, I have seen you do that several times. That's a that's a that's a good point. So Euphoria, <laughs> you see them. It like they're. It looks like they're talking to each other. Everything looks like they're talking to them. Just no mouth movements or speaking. Uh, but gurgle noise says to you. I think I, I think they're. Talking like we talk, Euphoria. Over the over the table, I honestly really feel like Euphoria would just like talk out loud to gurgle noise, and like that's why she appears crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because she doesn't understand that it's just like in her head. Um, oh, really? You don't? I I it's distant. I feel like I can hear them. I don't think what. <laughs> Oh, nothing. I'm sorry. I, I was just talking to myself. It's fine. Don't worry about it. We're, right. Well, we're we're heading that way too. Uh, if you're looking for some company on this last bit of the hike. Oh yes, I don't I don't mind at all. Oh my goodness, where are my manners? Hi. Um, I didn't give you my name. I'm Euphoria. It's it's really nice to meet you. Ah, I suppose uh my manners took flat too. Uh, I'm Crispin. This is Ashwin, and uh, the one. In the back there, that's uh, Orson, and we got Prady here uh, up in front taking the lead for us. And uh, at that point, you guys continue on, and please feel free to stop me if you would like to ask more questions. Uh, you continue on up the seaside cliff, and approaching the tentacle, once you go through a bunch of switchbacks, uh, you see a the tentacle... Is when, once you get closer, it looks not obviously not um, fresh in any way, but it seems to be in a state of petrification or uh, something like that. It's it's not slimy like you would think a tentacle should be, and uh, approaching closer, uh, you see that there's creases on the side of the tentacle where the trail uh, meets it. On the way up, I don't have any more questions, but I do fill you for you on the, the, the denizens of Felix Town and how we're, we're going into what's apparently sacred ground to them. Uh, so just a heads up before, uh, I don't know if you tend to cause explosions where you go or mess things up real bad we sometimes do so i'm just warning you ahead of time that uh, there are some people who might not take too kindly to us 
making too much of a ruckus over here. Just a thought. So you know. You said you're not from around here. They seem they seem really into Felix back there. Yeah. Really you, into Felix. <laughs> Euphoria, you uh when you were kind of scouting the area and you saw some of these golems and constructs, uh there was something weird and off about them and uh there did seem to be a cultish thing about them and now hearing this it just confirms some of the things you suspected uh but felix tricknips is simply a gnome inventor famous around the world for creating warforged and uh arcane trains and uh dirigibles just him and his partner essentially were the steve jobs of this world and uh most nobody really knows too much about him but um he's been around for a, at least a couple hundred years which is not unusual for for uh gnomes um approaching the door i assume you guys approach the door mm-hmm yeah, uh, Euphoria would have just said, yeah, a couple of Trixie Pixies told me to skirt around town, so I avoided meeting any of the townsfolk. Yeah, we went we went right on in, and uh, I, I can't say I regret that decision, but I, I'm not exactly too <laughs> happy about it either, so... Prati tries to, to mime all the drinking that they did. He's like, well, there's a good call of it. <laughs> Had yourselves a regular party, huh? Oh beer. yeah, there is one goes, of those. That he he goes, made. Beer golem, beer golem. <laughs> yeah, Felix made a beer golem. It was it was uh, probably his best invention to date, if if I do say so. That that's a uh, that's something we did the day before, so that's not a big deal. That's that was days ago now and, uh, that that we were drinking for. And now that you. Uh... That now that that's mentioned, you can smell like hoppy slash bready type of smell on. Let's see, it was proddy, definitely crispy. I uh, got bags under my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Telltale signs of of hangovers. Uh, gurgle noise says to you, Euphoria. I like these people. They seem nice. They haven't tried to kill you yet. I well, think we should be friends. Well, we're going to take it easy on that front. Okay, buddy? And we're just going to see how this goes. Okay. I have a pretty good, you know, uh, uh, what's in, into inner... Intuition? Yeah. And um, I, I have a good feeling about these, these... I mean, who's seen a mouse folk? Come on. That's... That she's adorable. She's got really long whiskers. Yeah, she's pretty cute, isn't she? <coughs> uh, and approaching the door... Crispy keeps responding to you when you say those things. Like, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you worry we'd just be talking out loud. And, <laughs> like... But try to keep it on, like, the quiet side because she knows she's in front of people now. <laughs> Perfect. Uh... <laughs> Entering the tentacle, when you get close to it, the doors swing open almost like a grocery store uh, motion detected uh, glass door. And inside, it looks exactly how you think a tentacle would look, except everything is hardened and um, it's pretty tight in there. It's probably like seven feet diameter, um, but it continues down at a pretty steep angle. Um, and the floor is not too slimy, but you may have to be careful, um, as you continue on. And, uh, it takes about 10 minutes before you start noticing this thing's not flattening out. And you seem to have to start catching yourself from slipping a little bit more. Uh, why don't all of you make... Um, just a general 
dexterity check for a certain amount of of uh, what happened, Dave? Can a nat one? Okay. Can I voluntarily try to like do a controlled slide instead yeah. of walking down? Yeah. That's what I'm going for. Okay. Uh, still need the dex. Yep. So just straight dex. Yeah. Okay. So it's a, it's a two for me, I guess, because I have a plus one. Well, I also got a nat one for crispy, uh, which <laughs> turns into a five. Ashwin got a 10. Okay. And I'll do Orson. Okay. So. 21 for Euphoria. Okay. Uh, Euphoria, where would you have been in the marching order of this? Would you have stayed behind them or middle? I would have probably taken point. Okay. Um, fantastic. So, uh, <laughs> Crispy. You see him kind of, like, prepare himself, like he's about to get ready to do something, Dave. And uh, while he's doing that, he slips and just starts going. As the floor has begun to build up an algae or a mucousy type slipperiness and takes out Ashwin and Orson and Euphoria... And uh, we'll say that Prati, surprised by all of this, probably just goes for it, right? That's something Prati would do. Just once he sees everyone is sliding down. Mm -hmm. uh, and you slide for a good minute, and you're just going down and down. It's very dark. You guys are going deep into the ocean, and so light is, is finding it difficult to get to greater depths. Uh, as it starts to flatten out, you hear a voice out loud. It's not in your heads, but you hear a voice go, Welcome. Is it a voice we recognize? No. <clears throat> I felt we were just taking a little too long. That's all uh, I was doing. That's what I meant to do, and that's why we're down here now. Uh, thanks for the welcome. Uh, can anybody see anything? <laughs> Um, I, Prati, you just see, uh, uh, Prati touches his rod. He has like, it's all dark and he, he touches like the tip of his rod and then he, that's, uh, bright within like 10 feet of it. Excellent. What you see is the tentacle shaft flattening out and you do see it kind of opening up a good distance down, um, and you guys are still sliding, but at this point, you guys can get your, to your feet. And the voice again says, Welcome. If you are to continue, take what you want and do what you will. Just remove the body of the prototype that activated the lab. Remove the body? The prototype? <laughs> what? What is this talking about? We didn't remove anything. We didn't touch anything. I, well, I mean, we did touch some things when we came in here and we were sliding down, but I mean, other than well, that, we didn't touch anything. The prototype is what we're here for, actually. We, we know what that one is, but uh, the body of the prototype, what do you think happened to her body? I thought she came here willingly. I have no idea. So when I just want to get to that. I want to get to that body and see if see what's left of it. When well, she seems to have pissed off the lab something for her, so when. Prati starts talking, uh, it's, his voice is uh, echoed into your mind, Euphoria. And Prati, you're not even doing this. Something is forcing this sort... So it's like something opened that telepathic gate. And now when you do your normal talking to your, your big bedfellows... Uh, you're, it's almost like you're just talking in the area, in the air, and it's it's going to euphoria. Um, and Gurgle, I can hear my own thoughts. <laughs> like I heard that, and I heard that, and, and I heard that. And Gurgle and noise that. says, uh, "Oh, euphoria, this is bad. It sounds like like robot or something. I what would robot sound like? But it's." Sounds like a robot. 
Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna find out what that is, and hopefully, maybe it won't try to you know hurt us or yeah, eat us. Yeah, we are. It, it, it <laughs> we're, we're, you know what it is, but it it might try to hurt us. I'm just warning you. Um, and all of you heard Gurgle Noise say that, and Orson says, oh. "What was that?" Um, that, that's my friend, uh, that's the one in the, uh, the sticky business, and, uh, the reason why I'm here, uh, he's the one that I need to get a new body for, so to speak. <laughs> we went Where? into this crazy wizard's dungeon thing, and my friend, uh, has very curious fingers, and he decided he was gonna pick something up that he probably shouldn't have. Don't and... touch de- and gurgle noise just speaks up now that he knows. Don't touch uh like dried out shrunk hearts that look like normal heart but very dry, no water in it. Don't touch hearts like that. Yeah, sounds gross. Now is is he here somewhere? Um <laughs> uh... <laughs> in a, ma- in a manner of speaking and she just like points at her ring <laughs> you see like a, oh okay you see a ring and it's got like a brain the it's got a brain kind of uh, sculpture to it with all the crevices and stuff and gurgle noise says oh i am sorry how rude of me my name is gurgle noise i was a fighter then i touched I touched heart. I'll just be honest, I'm not proud of it. Well, I can't say what you look like in person, but you make a mighty fine pretty ring, so... Um, Prati is just sort of, like, really pensive. He's just, like, gurgle noise. He's a bugbear. That's my name. I remember, I vaguely remember a gurgle noise. And Uh, Euphoria, you, uh... When when the the bubbling and the boiling of the water started happening and it started making gurgling noises, gurgle noise was like <laughs> doing what he does and was going like, "Who's calling? Is God calling my name? Euphoria, what's happening? I can't sense any. What is? Who's calling my name? I'm not sure if it's my cousin boiling noise, but it may be. It sounds like my name." <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> and that's and that's just what was happening as you were, and you're probably used to it kind of by now a little bit. Um, uh, continuing on, you guys get to the open portion of the tentacle, and you see that the walls are similar to the inside of the tentacle, except now in various parts the walls are translucent. And everything is getting a lot more moist and slippery, and there's water dropping, uh, like water had just been cleared out of this area. Um, little puddles everywhere. And again you hear, take what you want, do what you will, just remove the body of the prototype that activated the lab. I haven't seen anything to take quite yet. Hopefully Felix has some fun toys in here. It is in section C9. It responds. Uh, What section are we in? You are in 1A. (laughs) Probably the lobby. I guess we need to keep going in. (laughs) Excellent. Is there a map anywhere? (laughs) You can't light up the floor maybe with like a go this way. Nope. Okay. I'm going to keep walking. <laughs> as, as you think you're not answered, you see a light, a, a, a diffused bulb of light start to float over. You don't see where it's coming from. You see it's attached to some sort of arm, but it disappears into darkness. And when the light shines down through these translucent translucent portions of this body... Uh, you see that the outside of the body is, it almost looks like it's steaming or something. You're not quite sure what's going on on the outside. Uh, 
but uh, nevertheless, this light is kind of giving you what you requested. And well, she. <laughs> Oh, this place is nice. Oh, Felix. Start following the light, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> and um, the first small room you enter, and when you enter a different room, it's just an archway. Seems like it was not roughly cut out of this creature, like it was somehow made to form into this uh room type shape you enter hmm. this next area and you see a table a wooden table and you see very it's a pretty long table and there's three what looks like city models on it and uh the first model you come to in this room is a model of the continent which prodi you immediately uh, notice because it's looks similar to your to your yeah. map and uh, what you guys see is the continent but the Bay of Enver one of the major features of this continent uh, not dissimilar from the Mediterranean uh, in that there's a pinched point at the end uh, it shows that it shows the bay emptied and you see how deep the bay is and it's massively deep you have to step up to the model and look down on top of it uh, because if you step away you're just not getting the angle to see further uh, further enough down uh, and at the bottom you see what looks like a minor illusion storm at the bottom of this bay and there's ruins around it and it's actually animated and um just turning like a hurricane anything probably probably just is looking at a wide-eyed just oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm... go ahead I was just going to say, I'm going to take in all three before I start talking with them. <laughs> Excellent. Um, the next model is a model of the city of Anista. Y-N-Y-S-T-A. All of you know that the city of Anista, the independent city of Anista, is the biggest city on the continent. Uh, it is independent of any nation or state and has been that way for years, hundreds of years. And... Um, it is a twin city at the point, two points of the continent that pinch in, guarding the uh, entrance to the bay. And there's a small island in between them called the Isle of Inn. And the northern part of the city is called Innis, and the southern part of the city is called Ista. And you see a profile view of this city. It's well known because... It's never been conquered because of various magical enchantment, powerful magical enchantments that nobody knows quite how it works. Essentially, citizens can give their everlasting soul to the city and become corporeal, incorporeal soldiers that protect any any uh, protect the city from any invasions. Um, the profile of the city. You see under the Isle of Inn, the small island in between the two cities, you see, and this is known as like a party island, uh, a resort island, uh, you see Prati's been there, um, you see the tubes Prati that you saw when you were there that were lit up and there's various pyrotechnics and uh, magic effects being shot off them to kind of advertise the different inns. You see the tubes. Uh, was it you, actually, D Prati, that got the free ticket down into the tube? Nope. No. Okay. Uh, the tubes go down, and because it's a profile shot, they go down. Now you're seeing that they go down through the island pretty far and continue and eventually meet with the severed head of this massive humanoid creature underneath the island. And 
the humanoid creature is the model only goes to about its waist so you don't know how far how much further it goes down um and these tubes remind you of veins or arteries uh once they go into the body and then you also see that this beast this titan has its arms stretched out and it doesn't have hands either and the veins or arteries are also going under Innis and Ista. Um, what else? Titan tubes. There you go. That's a little freaky. And you guys have heard of these tubes. A lot of adventuring yeah. parties would go there. And the tricky thing about these tubes you've heard is that you don't know where they're going. And they change destinations, and the vast majority of adventuring parties don't return. And, um, yeah, it's just a big, giant mystery. And uh, the inns on that island charge exorbitant prices to to um, allow you. It's essentially like Undermountain, um, just in my homebrew world. Uh, then, let me just make sure I covered everything. The, the thing I have highlighted about that model, Innis, the northern city, Prati, you especially know this. Crispy, you haven't been to that city because you came up through a different up area. Yep. Euphoria, you've been to Innista, so you know that the center of the city when of Innis, the northern city, doesn't look how the model depicts it. And what you see on the model is the center of Innis is completely overgrown and taken over by plant life. Just massive trees. And Prati, you think you're pretty darn sure that that is in the district of where Venture Ventures is, the Arbor Green District, as well as Pate Point, which is where your house is. Mm. And you know that that's Arbor Green is like the garden section of that city, but it doesn't look like that, like what you're seeing on this model. Um, it looks like Felix has plans for the center of Innis, or this is just a model of what would happen if it was no longer inhabited and the the growth just goes crazy unchecked so it's very isolated to those neighborhoods around it there seems to be something keeping that lush vegetation like it, it's very it's a very defined border um mm. yeah so the third model is the model of the area of the continent that you guys were just in. It's the model of the Virenal Dominion, except it's pre-mountain collapse. Um, that happened two days ago? Yeah. <laughs> and um, what what you notice is the, the petrified cairns that you saw on a lot of the roads spaced out about a mile or so uh, apart... Um, they're there in the model, S the areas in which the cairns are knocked over, everything about the model looks how you remember that land, except the area where the cairns are knocked over on the model, instead you see, uh, the ground is drastically different from what you remember, um, Everything is colored by a red hue that reminds you of the crystals underground when you were, I guess, three days ago when you were under, uh, before you did all that damage. And um, the pine trees and other types of pines you saw populating this area are gnarled and curved, and everything has that red hue to it um, in, around the area of the cairns. Um, also, there's a gate around Dedrinsk to the north 
which is where the Strani Acting Company, you were told, is from. And there's a gate to the southeast, which is where, kind of where you were heading uh, before you got up to Mostashar. And the gate in Dedrinsk is, seems like it's, it's also similar to the maelstrom you saw. It seems animated and it's absorbing light and the gate to the southeast is uh emitting putting off kind of ice fog um yeah and those are the three models that two two gates that's got to be the living gate and the dread gate don't you think proudy Yes, definitely. Uh, you don't have to worry about the... Uh... One of them staying shut. Yeah, one of them we shut. <laughs> um, I reach my I hand out. Which one? Can I influence the image at all, or if I like swipe my hand through it, does it just go When you swipe at the model, we'll say it's the Viranol, and you hit a cairn, the an upright cairn and the ground around it suddenly turns and matches the ground around where the other knocked over cairns are. Huh, so it does react. What if I do this and I just put my hand on top of the mountains? Like, just... just the, it, Celestial it's, Titan smash the mountains. Does oh, anything yeah, <laughs> like it feels like a model. Um, mm -hmm. But let's... Do you do it over where the living gate is? Yeah. So when your hand hits the living gate, that's an illusion. Your hand goes right through it. But it feels like a traditional, a very well done. Uh, yeah. And if you think Felix did it, then you probably also think that it's probably to scale. And he would never say something sure. like, I, apology, I apologize for the crude crudeness of this model. Um, and yeah, it's a very well done model. And when you hit it, it kind of sloughs off some of the paint and stuff is covered on your hand mm -hmm. um yeah I, I was just trying to make it more accurate you guys <laughs> so uh euphoria you have a general idea of the geography of this continent and you know there's a mountain range there and when he smashes it and he says he's trying to make it more accurate it's kind of weird so yeah, I'm just going to pin that in my hat for later. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Um, okay, is there anything the else? Living, the Living um, Gate, the one we dropped a mountain on, right? Yeah. Essentially, okay. you saw from up high up in the air, you saw it implode. And, but there was so much dust, you couldn't really see exactly what was going on but it doesn't yeah. take a genius to figure out that something very 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 catastrophic happened i stand there looking at it for a minute looking at my hand the paint that's lopped off and i'm like nope sorry felix and i take on my flail and i just whack the mountains as hard as i can to try and break them excellent uh I'm not gonna make you roll anything for that it's easy enough and the mountains crack and shatter and um certainly doesn't look as good as it previously did but no more accurate <laughs> we walked into somebody's home and here you are taking a flail to their table he also uh, just told you that be careful this is the also, religious <laughs> also didn't you just tell me yeah 10 minutes ago that we should probably not piss off the townsfolk well the nice they're kind of culty the, nice the townsfolk thing never that, come in here they never come here so we can get away with a little bit. I just mean if we blow it up completely, they might notice. Well, Maybe. like, okay, back to my first point. We walked first into point. somebody's home, uh, we, and we you met, just took a flail Felix. to their table. We're, we're friends with Felix. I feel like he would appreciate that I'm keeping the model accurate to what is currently the landscape in the Varanal Dominion. Uh, I'm doing it in his interest, really. When you say I'm friends with Felix, the light kind of hovers over you and you hear very it's it's louder now again you see the same thing you just see this diffused 
bulb and a arm attached to it going off into nothingness. And you hear the same voice you heard when you entered a little bit louder now say, Friends of Felix, interesting. I don't think friends would smash his models. I was just I was just explaining it to her. He would appreciate the Veronal Dominion does not look like this anymore. It's an inaccurate model. Look, he designed these other things that they can be changed, and I and I topple one of the cans over again so that it changes. Like, look, I mean, it's an interactive model. I can't believe the lab is talking back to me. And yeah, it's a weird place. So <laughs> somehow. You don't know what's going on. You don't know if this light is connected to this squid-type creature you're now inside. Uh, but somehow there's communication going on inside the lab. You don't know where it's coming from. I just want to make it clear that it's not emanating from any specific uh, area. Is there anything else you would like to do in this room? Um, can we look? or go back to the map model that had the, I guess, like, the plant area on it. Yeah. You said it had defined borders. What do those borders look like? Are they smooth, or are they jaggy, or... It's it's um very smooth, where the... V Is it rectangular or circular in shape? It's circular. Like... Um, and it goes out to where the city meets the bay, and... All of you know that the water in between Innis and the Isle of Inn and the Isle of Inn and Ista is known as the Raving Straits, which I regret naming it that because Richard got such a kick out of that. Um, it's known as the Raving Straits. There you go. Um, uh, it took a second, but I got it. Because you have to hire certain types of people. It used to be members of the Cobalt Soul and still is to some extent to ferry you through that area. Otherwise, there's something going on that makes it nearly impossible for a ship to navigate going in and out of the bay or from the city to the Isle of Inn. Uh, there's some instable magic going on there that wrecks a ton of ships. Um, and, uh, yeah, the greenery is just very aggressive in that one area, and then... It looks like it comes up against a barrier of some kind. I think that's a, excuse me, a two. You do, when you look, since it is a profile view, um, a partial profile view, you um, you see tubes going in there, various places, but you kind of, um, it's hard to deduce that it it is. Um, like, like a tube coming from like a titan or something right like the titan you mentioned earlier yeah the the tubes are coming out of the arms and, and through the past the severed portion of the titan's arms um and they are connected obviously but it's just hard to tell if the tubes are the border of this green area um anything else one last thing for me yep uh first model I'd like to take my water skin and just see what happens if we refill the Bay of Enver. Excellent. Yeah, when you um, pour your water skin into it, it barely fills the deepest part of the bay, but when you pour it in, it starts swirling in a whirlpool. Almost like one of those um, those automatic stirring coffee cups or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have have any of y'all sailed in the Bay, Bay of Envir? Is is it treacherous like this? I've never, I never have, so I can't say that I know. I never have either, but I don't think it's like that. It looks like a hurricane. It does, but real deep. I just was curious if if it's prone to whirlpools. The other ones seem more or less accurate in some fashion, I imagine. Um, and I can't imagine that Felix doesn't know exactly what he's talking about here. So I wonder what's going on down there. Oh, something to uh, I don't know. Mind. Looking at it just gives me a real case of glassophobia. Just... Right. 
yeah, no, I don't, I don't need to go diving down there. <laughs> that sounds like a terrible idea. Humans don't belong in the ocean or in deep waters, <laughs> not at all. Uh, you were, and then you look around. To James Cameron. <laughs> yeah. Well, you look around when you say that, crispy, and you can Shit. barely <laughs> see the sunlight. At the, it's so dim. You realize you are hundreds of feet below the surface. <laughs> it just occurred to me that we're a bunch of uh, land folk really deep when I said that, and uh, I'm a lot more heebie-jeebied out by this lab. Can we press on? <laughs> I came prepared, and like Euphoria just gestures to the cloak of, uh, uh, what is it? The cloak of the manta ray on her. <laughs> cool. Uh, ha- very happy for you. Uh, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't have anything like that, so um, I don't know what's happening here. Let's let's press on. Euphoria. What? Light bulb? Are you going to show us the way again? Euphoria. Uh, don't worry. I know he can hear this, but he's got a bow on his back. I bet he can't shoot as good as me. Gurgle noise. What did I tell you about gloating? I just. I, I would love. I would love to have a contest with you, Gurgle noise. We'll see how well you can shoot as a ring. Hey, and, uh... that's a low blow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're gonna brag while you're ring. Hey, by the way, when was the last time you're hungry? Think about that for a Please second. Don't, Let's press don't on. Don't get him started. I just got him to stop talking about food. I'm so <laughs> hungry, Euphoria. What? I just want. But here's the thing: Are you hungry or are you bored? I bet you're bored. Doesn't seem like you have much need for food in your current state. I don't. That's a good. Uh, that's a good point. Either way, you're gonna be bummed. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else in this room? It's very besides bar- the models. Yeah, it's very barren so far inside this creature lab slash lab. Uh, but the things, the, the dirt and filth on the floor looks like it's been there for a while. Everything looks like the, ta- the tables looks like it's been there for a while. The models, they're very well done models, but when you smashed them and, uh, touched them, there was a pretty darn thick, uh, a very thick film over it. And, um... So yeah, everything in here looks pretty old. Um, Continuing on, instead of just an open archway to the next room, uh, there's similar doors to what you experience outside, and as you approach, um, they swing open, and it's darkness inside, um, but your light kind of... you see figures in there. They don't move, though. Is it magical darkness? Because I do have dark vision, which allows me to see 60 feet. Oh, okay. Because um, I don't think anyone else has that in this group. I have the goggles. Oh, yeah. Bean. He has his goggles, yeah. Why did I take some ice? Um, I'm DMing. This makes a lot of sense to get ice in my mouth. <laughs> So, you see the figures, and you see there's five of them, and they look similar to the townsfolk. Uh, considering that I have not seen the townsfolk proper, what do they look like? Gollum-like. Construct-like. Do they look particularly bugbear-like? You do not... You can't tell from... from... You're, where you're at right now, you guys are going to have to enter or do something else. Uh, Ashwin's keeping an eye on the ground. Can she make out any footprints that have walked through here, specifically irises? Uh, no. Okay. What'd you guys oh, like Roddy, to do? You, you got like the light. To... <laughs> Let's go talk to these people. Okay. You guys enter, and the doors slam behind you and the 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 bulb of light 
lights up the room, and you see um, five golems of different make. You see uh, one of them is a rock golem. They're not moving. Uh, one of them is a rock golem, and they're in various states of disrepair. They don't look like they're in like good... He's got a guitar and, like leather yes and um straight blonde hair and is doing a line of coke um <laughs> the, the rock golem is doing that um and then the next golem is a more humanoid in terms of the flesh and it is without arms and part of its head and where those parts are missing there are crystals with the red hue you're so familiar with sticking out of it that reminds you a lot of the troll you fought before you entered the the Virenal domain. The next golem is a human flesh golem that's missing an arm. The next golem is a it's it has the same stitching and flesh golem type Frankensteinian, I don't even know if that's a word. Frankensteinian uh, connections but it's a dragon. It's a lion with dragon's heads sticking out of it. They're not moving. Multiple. There's two dragon's heads, and it's medium sized, so it's not large by any extent. There's two heads, a black and green head, and it looks like there are three places for other heads where they might have been ripped off or something happened. They're not there, and they're not at the floor. Um at the floor beneath them. And the next golem, the fifth golem, uh, reminds you, Prati, of your trip when you time traveled, your trip across the bay to the Isle of Inn when those sea creatures started attacking you guys. Mm -hmm. um, they are... It looks like... there was like a bunch of rats, right? Weren't there a bunch of rats that attacked uh, us? That was before then. Um, uh, okay. The creatures that you saw were human-like, except they had mutations of, like, an urchin-type back and a tentacle arm and sharp fish teeth. Uh, they look like they might have been human once or something happened, but they, it's like half human, half sea creature. Um, and one, it does have a tentacle arm and spines coming out of it and um sharp pointy i'm trying to think of the fish that has sharp pointy teeth i can't a shark no well, like needle po needle point type teeth uh, uh black dragon fish excellent i need to that, look that, that up has sharp, it's nightmare fuel trust me excellent that's what i'm <laughs> looking for uh, and you also notice on the first golem, the rock golem, it has something written on it. Uh, from left to right, the rock golem has number five, the next one has seven, the next one has nine, the next one has eleven, the next one has thirteen. And on the rock golem, uh, it says... So wait, are these model numbers on the bodies it's, then that we can see? Yeah, you just see numbers. Um, okay. Holy shamoli, where did it go? Is it three, five, seven, and eleven. Yeah. Man, you guys. Which are ones getting... are they on again? Was that rock golem? Was three? Was five? It was five. Okay, hang on. Um, you guys are going to get lucky here because I accidentally closed the page. Okay, here we go. It says... On the rock golem, number five, it says, One of us does not belong with the others. If you can pick it out, it will serve you, and the others will allow you to 
pass. If you pick the wrong one, we will kill you. You have 60 seconds. It's the number nine, right? It's the only non-prime prime number. What were the numbers again? Five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. I don't know. I'm making them up. <laughs> five. It is. It is. Seven, uh, nine, five, 11. seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. Oh, five, seven, nine, eleven. Five, seven, thirteen. Nine, Rock owns five. Who was seven? The humanoid without arms with crystals sticking out of it. Golem nine was the f was the more classic Frankensteinian flesh golem. With uh, that's missing an arm. Golem eleven. By the way, I started the sixty second timer. Golem eleven is the dragon. Golem thirteen is the sea spawn type golem. You have ten seconds. Right, Claudia, uh, I think you might be onto it. Honestly, uh, numbers aren't my game. What do you do? Uh. We just say number nine. Okay. I, I go up to number nine and I and I shake its uh, hand. The closest approximation to a hand there is. <laughs> when you touch number nine, it comes to life and doesn't show any aggression. The others kind of shift, but they don't show aggression, and it stands next to you, Crispy. Whew. Good choice, Proddy. <laughs> Looks like it worked. And Brian... I think you try to melt my face off. Go ahead and <laughs> pick... Go to D and D Beyond and search for reduced threat flesh golem. Probably just going beer golem, beer golem. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what the beer golem looked like? Like that? No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Unfortunately. Ugh. Uh, okay, you got it, Brian? Uh, not yet. Almost. Yeah, I basically have it. Okay, got it. Okay. So it's basically, it's the same. So we'll say 47 hit points. All that. Okay. Um, okay. So... There's a corridor leading out of this room. You came in the opposite end, and everything is just kind of linear at this point. Uh, and down the corridor is a T in the hallway. And as you're heading down uh, to your right, it seems to be m more mucus has been pushed to the side. Like, the right one is a more traveled one. And the left one, it goes off and c turns to the... Each one turns down towards the direction you're going. So when you look down, you can't see the end of it. Does that make sense? Of each hallway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the left one doesn't look as traveled. Which way do you guys want to go? Gurgle Noise says... Euphoria, there's... Could be treasure. No hearts, though. Treasure. Uh, which way? That's a good question. Uh, lab, lab, which way is uh, Felix's toys? You are so heading in the right C direction. C9? You are heading in the right direction. You are in X4. Well, the, we have two directions, though. Right or left? Can, it, can I get a globe to show me the way? One way will lead you there. Process of elimination... Cool, so the lab is only somewhat helpful. Um, well, usually I say one of two things. Uh, you can't go wrong when you're going right and follow your nose. Which way smells better? Doesn't, <laughs> um, doesn't Orson have uh, one of those familiar spells? Um, we could just send, send, a familiar, you know, send a familiar down in there. Does he? Let me one look. of us still does, I think. Maybe it was Nihilus. Orson Acres. Yeah, because Orson sent his familiar into those little little hold, gopher holes. Oh, yeah. Uh, ye, 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 yes. Wait, does it? It's not. Archfey. 
hacked magic. No, he's packed with a blade. He doesn't just have the spell. Oh, yeah, no. He wouldn't have the spell. Okay. I don't know. Did he really okay. say he had a familiar? Is it familiar that he cast? He had speak with beasts. That's the only thing I remember. It's not important, I mean, but... Yeah, that's not... Like I if thought he, he had something. If he said he had a familiar, then uh, maybe he was mistaken. Um, so, uh, what would you like to do? The smell thing, that's correct. Uh, make a perception check. Using the stupid dice box again. It's another nat one. Thank you for using it. Uh, no problem. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, it smells like fishy. It's it's not quite rotten. It's the consistent smell you've been smelling. You mm -hmm. can't really get a... Well, so after my last line, I say, and uh, it smells like garbage both directions, so, right? Are there any tracks There's, uh, the, that... It looks like, like more traffic has gone to the right. Uh, Gurgle Noise says to you, if there's... <sighs> the area less traveled might have treasure. You're not going to... You make well, a good point, we're not, Gurgle Noise. We're not looking for treasure, sweetie. We're looking for that man so he can give you a new body. <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought you said also, like, him or one of his assistants, someone. Are we looking for him, only him now? I mean, he's the best of the best, is he not? I only want what's best for you. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, I need a new body so I can show Crispy how to shoot an arrow. Well, you, you can you can sure think about that. <laughs> uh... Maybe we can, we can put a pin in this. We'll come back to that other path later. I okay. got this scary check out thing. The you want this one? <laughs> the, the goblin's standing next to me. He doesn't yeah. look like he can shoot a bow very well, though. No, so, he needs he uh, needs another arm. Yeah, you, you would need that uh, to, to shoot. I don't know if you know how to shoot a bow, because you're a ring, but you do need two arms, so you're right. Hey, I was not a ring um, before. I was I was seven foot tall bugbear. I have big family. Stories and hearsay. Stories and hearsay. <laughs> I, I only know you as a ring. Gurgle right. noise is like growling. <laughs> Can you not rob my friend up, please? Because I, I it's, greatly appreciate it's tough. it. It's tough. It's real tough. He's just a ring. <laughs> Let's go left though. I'm with gurgle noise. I could shoot your eyebrow. <laughs> I could shoot your eyebrows off and not even, not even fart twice and or whatever and think about things. You could, right. if you weren't a ring. <laughs> yeah. Why are you so right. mean? Okay, let's look for treasure. So heading. I'm just giving you shit, gurgle noise. I like your name. Prati starts to just walk left. So heading left. Uh, you get to that turn in the hallway, and uh, you see a little, like, room, and it seems to be packed full of stuff. Make a perception check. Wow. 19 for Euphoria. Eleven for Crispy and thirteen for Ashwin. Still going with sub ten rolls. Uh, I got a, I got a three. Okay. Okay. I rolled another one. <laughs> you and me, we're we're killing it today. It's what crazy. was yours, Euphoria? I'm sorry. <clears throat> Nineteen. Okay, Euphoria. Oh, thank God you're here. You see a. <laughs> it looks like. Peeking out is a uh, chest of some kind. A chest of some kind? Yeah. Just there's there's Around all like kinds a... of like, there's brooms packed into this little, it, it looks like a storage oh, so space. Like... Uh, there's brooms and wooden buckets and it's just not organized well. There's all sorts of crap. 
but under the crap, you think you see a chest of some kind. All right, so it's like an episode of Hoarders in here. Got yeah. it. In this um, area, yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, how much stuff is it buried under, and how far away is it from me? Not too much. I mean, imagine like your typical hallway closet when it's packed too much too full of stuff and you can you can just kind of, it's not going to be hard to to like pull okay. the chest out yeah well, so I'll, uh... gurgling like, well gurgling unless your treasure is uh brooms and mops i think we might have struck out uh, i once so made fast. a i once made a long bow out of a broom have you ever done that <laughs> i i haven't um I, I also am wondering if you have. That sounds a little No, I did. I, I did. watched him do it. Yeah. That's when she that's when she met uh laughing noise and yeah. Giggle noise. Giggle noise. I'm I'm gonna guess your brothers? No, giggle noise Sisters? is my is my human sister. Laughing noise is my half orc sister. You have an interesting family. Yeah. For, for a ring. So while they're having this discussion, I'll Not go over and tug on the <laughs> tug on the chest. So you pull it out. It's it seems pretty light, um, and there's no lock on it. It is latched though, um, and you guys see her doing this. Uh, some of you didn't see that there was a chest under there. Now all of you see it. Can I check it for magical traps or anything? Uh, sure. Make a, um, investigation check or, yeah, we'll just say our investigation. Okay, so not Arcana. Are you proficient? <laughs> yes. Oh, go ahead. 17. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's any magical traps on it. Seems All okay. Right. I'll uh, pop the latch and flip open the chest then. Okay. Uh, you go to pop the latch, and there's a little turn lock on it uh, that you just turn vertical and then pull the latch up. And you flip the top open, and what you see is, like, a bunch of plungers for a second. And then the next thing you know, you're getting hit in the face with a bunch of plungers. Everyone roll initiative. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> what? Oh, <man. laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Amazing. So, I need to roll, because they got a surprise on you. <laughs> One of them did, we'll say. I got an 11. I believe, uh... Fucking terrible rolls. <laughs> in addition to actually, before before she started getting whapped in the face... Oh, uh, she gets warned? She gets warned. In addition, you and any of your companions within 30 feet of you can't be surprised except when incapacitated. Roll a d20. Oh, and I also have... Brian. Sure. That danger sense, too. Oh, that yeah? Off. Read me danger <laughs> sense again. I'm sorry. Uh, you physically told it to me, so you okay. said that I. Yeah, it's in the. I'll just look it up. It's in the barbarian it's class. Barbarian feet. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, what did I do with my book? I got it. I think that one is you have to be able to see it, and then you can't be surprised. Oh, or something okay. Like that, yeah, you're fine. You you're not could. getting surprised. I rolled terribly, cool. anyways. So, um, these things start did hitting you, do... you, but it's not doing damage. And right before, as you're pulling the lid open, right before you do, um, a whip starts, like, tickling your ear. Well, hold on, Brian. What what did you roll in that d20? Oh, eight. Okay. So yeah. maybe it doesn't. So but it tries. It does. <laughs> it does. Because it's been acting weird, but it, it does warn you. So all of you aren't surprised. Initiatives I'm going to need a gain. Who's 11. You four, you got a 10. <laughs> okay. Crispy's a 19. Ashwin is also a 19. Okay, 19. Crispy, Euphoria, and Orson got a 7. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17
two, three. That's everyone, right? Yeah, I think I got everyone. All right. Um, Crispy or Ashwin, you are first. Um, <laughs> I'll go ahead and uh, Crispy will try to whip the plungers. Yeah, they're all um, floating, <laughs> and they're all dust-covered in various states of disrepair. The rubber on them is cracking, and they're all floating towards you. Um, all right, so I'm going to start cracking the whip, uh, staying 10 feet away from them. And I'm going to be saying, damn it, Felix, as I'm doing it. <laughs> oh, right. and you hear in over in that same familiar robotic-type voice you hear, Oh, yes. Animated plungers. That's it. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so so the first, helpful. The first one is a 23. Yep. Then it's a 14. Yep. And then it's really good, 25. Yep. So I got three hits. What was the second one? Uh, 14. That one doesn't hit. I'm sorry. That one doesn't hit. Okay, so two hits. Yep. Uh, that is 10 points of damage on the first one. Max damage and minimum damage. And five points of damage on the second one. Well, uh, despite your minimum damage, you smash through two plungers with your whip. Woo! Um, <laughs> I say, Ash, you're up! And she jumps off my shoulder. I got it! In a furious hail of sword play. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not going to... She doesn't say it's barbecue time this time. Though. Okay. <laughs> no barbecue time. Uh, that's a 15 for the first one. Yep. And 19 for the second. she just get two attacks? Yeah. Probably. Unless right? she action yeah. surges. Right. Okay. So two hits. Eleven points and eleven points. Okay. You smash through two. Ashwin comes down with her scimitar unlit and smashes through two more plungers. There are two more remaining. Who knows if they will ever get to go? Probably not. Uh it is Parati's turn. Are the two that are remaining within ten feet of each other? Uh yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, you hear a in between the two plungers. You just hear a really like loud, thunderous noise, like kapa, like boom, and they have to uh, make a uh, a Constitution saving throw. So, how far away were you? How far away can you be, uh, crispy whipping? Uh, I was ten feet away. Ashwin's. On top of them. So you are going to affect Ashwin. Are you okay with that? And also Euphoria because she was standing. She was right the first there, right at yeah. the chest. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Don't get scratch, all of us. Scratch that. <laughs> um, one of these days, I'll roll initiative to where I go first. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'll just uh, let's see. You just you just see a just a crackling just beam of of uh of like electricity going towards one of the uh let me just make a, a roll first for eldritch blast eldritch blast uh, let's see here uh, 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 uh yeah so the first one definitely hits uh, so I rolled a 17, but it's I think it's a 23. Um, I just have to roll the damage. So five damage to one of them. Smashes it to pieces. It is a oh, plunger. And, and, then a <laughs> and then a 10. Uh, Won't do it. That yeah. So you see one of them burst, and then you see another 
You see the other uh, beam of black energy just kind of just graze the other one. Doesn't quite get it. Excellent. Uh, Euphoria. Uh, I will try to attack it with my rapier. Heck yes. <laughs> and I don't do it. I, I roll a six. Nope. <laughs> Anything else? Do you do you have extra attack? Uh, I don't know. No, I do not. I went with College of Lore, so I don't have. Okay. Um, I'll give Bardic Inspiration to Crispy. Excellent. Oh, well, how do you how do you yeah, inspire him? <laughs> I I just yell like, get the goddamn thing. <laughs> you feel inspired. <laughs> Very inspired. Maybe it's her devilish horns or something you feel just extra motivated uh yeah it's the first bard since girosol right girosol i think so oh, she was a bard yeah i don't even know if she was a bard yeah she was a swords bard i think mm -hmm. uh okay orson's turn well the flesh golem got a seven on its initiative by the way oh i forgot what's I his forgot what's his dex Minus one. I rolled an eight. Orson's turn. Uh, he's going to Eldritch Blast. Two beams at the final one. That's not going to do it. That's not going to do it either. Jesus Christ. Uh, Flesh Golem. Not Berserk. So it, I got a one. It's not a six. So it attacks. Okay. Let's see. And it's attack, two slam attacks. That's not the right die. There we go. I know what a d20 looks like. 23, that hits, and 24. Yep. Smash, smash, smash. Ooh, 2d8. Look at this guy. Mm. 15, that smashes it. And, and 19. Yep. Goosh. With his one arm, he swings down and back and splinters shoot everywhere your biggest foe yet plungers have been defeated <laughs> I, I didn't rightly know what that thing was going to do uh, good to know that it did that good thing good thing <laughs> a damn Felix for animating his cleaning supplies ugh he would it, he would. It it kind of makes sense. I would do that if I had magic. That that's a fair point. Who Anything likes else in that box? <laughs> Nothing. I heard of a mouse folk wizard once who did the same thing, but it was with uh, mops. <laughs> <laughs> that is a horrible chore. <laughs> oh boy. Uh. <laughs> excellent. So yeah, there's if you investigate. When you investigate, uh, you don't find anything in the bottom of the chest. No hidden panel or anything. Inve make an investigation check. Looks like we need to go back up to that hallway. Yep. Careful ah. wrong when you're going right. <laughs> I rolled a one. So that's five. Yeah, you, you don't find <laughs> anything. Oh, all right. I grab a broom, okay, and walk away with it over my shoulder. You have a broom. No, just saying, we might we might need it later. As you, Roddy's just imitating the lab and saying, "Take what you will." That's <laughs> that was my thinking. I, I should take something. You see, you you see the light uh, kind of diffuse off the flesh of the petrified uh, squid, and as it kind of moves when you say that. Um, Heading back towards the right hallway, it does, once you hit the left turn, it does continue down into another room, and it is similar to the other previous rooms you've been in, the bigger rooms. Uh, there's a table, not as big as the previous table, and there's another model on it, and it is, uh, now you see it's a model you're pretty darn sure you are sure is what you're currently in it is a tentacle reaching up out 
of the water and this massive squid type creature partially buried in the floor of the ocean uh very far away from where its tentacle is in the cliffside and the top of this kraken is cut off in this model and you see little versions of yourselves in this room and the next thing you notice is ahead of you is a partially translucent uh kind of a foggy wall blocking entrance to the next room and there's a figure that is very familiar to you prodi prone not moving on the other side of that Trans Cyrus. translucent wall and in the in the model you see little versions of yourselves in the room you're currently in and um the only difference in the model is that there's no door where there is a door uh in real life in the room you're actually in um Parati runs over to the prone uh golem slash construct and just goes over to look at it you are up against the wall and you can't really see anything because it's partially it's almost like mm -hmm. one of those shower um privacy like privacy glass a little bit um you're very convinced that it's iris not moving on the floor when Prati ran from where we currently were over to the wall did his token on this uh map move at all it did Ooh. that's a little freaky that, that is a little freaky it, uh, it, i don't that, like that at all how detailed is the little thing it, it, can you can i see my broom yep I'm going to do this. I want to throw my broom somewhere else in the room. Okay. And then on the model, I want to poke it. The broom. Okay. Uh, make an investigation check. You realize if you poke, if you poke that thing, you're going to mess with this whole room. Don't. I'm just trying to poke the broom. Hold the investigation check because you're not checking okay. to see if it's a real... You're not checking to see if the model... Like, the broom on the model is real, like an illusion, are you? Or are you just trying to move it? What are you trying to... I'm just to... trying to see a, a little of both. Uh, let's see if my finger goes through the broom, and it's just an image of me, of where I threw the broom. Okay. I'm poking it on the model. Okay. Um, when you poke and it... if it's not, I poke it and it moves. I don't want to see if the broom moves, too. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you throw your broom, it follows on the model, and then when you make your investigation check... I'm just going to say you're making an investigation check. Uh, roll that for me. Miss my box. <laughs> I wish I had just missed the box and just stuck with it, because instead <laughs> I got a nat one, because I rolled in the box. What? Again? <laughs> this thing is cursed. It is cursed. You need new this dice. not the first time. No, I need a new... It's just the box. It's just... That's why I don't use it anymore. <laughs> Yet he's using it. <laughs> well, I need, I'm, I'm on my bed. I need a hard surface to roll. Okay, fair enough. Uh, it may work in your favor. We'll see. Uh, when you when you when you touch it, yeah, the the broom. When you touch the model of the broom, the broom moves. Hmm. This is a fun bit of work. Can we? Prati goes over to the model, and he's kind of noticing what they're doing. Can he? He like moves Iris to the other side of the. the Make glass. an investigation check. You're picking up what I'm putting down. <laughs> uh, when you you're very focused on Iris, and you you notice that, yeah, you're the models of you and and. The broom and iris are definitely illusions. You can see through them now. And when you go to reach for iris, your hand just goes through her body oh. on the model. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, Prati. Hmm. 
looking at the model, is there any indication of like, like you said, the the outside of this structure we're in is like kind of steaming possibly or something? Is there any indication from the model what like the bubbling is, or is that not animated at all? It is animated, and but it's not giving off any other than a visual indication. It's not giving anything other than that. Okay. No, no other sign of why it's doing that on the model. Nope. But the hmm. room is still like it looks like there's still various drops of water periodically hitting puddles on the floor and stuff. So that part is consistent. And the model is a dead ringer for the room. There's no like um, hidden section on the model that we don't necessarily see in real life. Yeah, you, it. Everything in this room looks normal. In the next room, uh, the only thing you see in the model on that room is Iris. Any other ways to get in that room? From you, where we are? You tell me. Like, uh, what well, else? Yeah. You tried to get Iris from that side through into this room. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Can I take my own little piece and put it? in that room yeah uh as you're moving your piece forward you don't feel anything and then as soon as it crosses the threshold of the wall you feel something and you're not in the room you were currently in and nobody's in the room with you except iris and uh what does everyone else do when he does that i go um, shit we need to keep <laughs> <I> push... <laughs> no <laughs> i push mine over too okay uh, you disappear and pop in the next room, and I just Brody gonna say Ashwin the... and Orson do too. Oh man, I don't know. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's good idea for every every person to come over there. Uh, you have to keep I think one. I think Ashwin would. I think do you Orson want me to would. stay here. I think Orson one hundred percent would. He, uh, I guess I'm thinking of my own motivations, because I see Prati in a room. Orson's the guy who... <laughs> between us with Iris, and he doesn't care as much. But Orson himself would definitely just kind of touch something. My, yeah, <laughs> he tried to jump in a bag of holding for fun. Yeah, yeah, no, he's, you're right. He would totally just push himself over, too. Nope, none of us thought that through. <laughs> Euphoria, Euphoria, what do you do? <laughs> I'll stay here. I'm not doing what everybody else just did. <laughs> I don't, I don't like that one bit. Prati goes over to Iris and takes a closer look. She's not moving. Um, you kind of see her eyes twitching. Like he, he wants to find the. Uh, he's looking for either the power ring or the uh, the piece of the rod. Sure. What else? You uh, let me describe the. I will describe the other parts of the room now. Um, you see various tools around the room. Uh, you see a operating table in the center of the room. Um, things that would remind you of a surgery theater, uh, mixed with a mixed with some of the alchemical things you saw in Mostashar when you were talking to Felix. Uh, you see saws, pliers, scalpels, needles. You see stone jars with some weird. Uh, lifted um what's the word i'm looking for some weird writing on it uh that is in relief uh and you see the stone you see the stone jars with lids on top and you see stone vessels that have some dirtied uh equipment instruments that you see everywhere um mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what would you like to do? I'm looking around there, and this is a terrifying place. Uh, what's it say? It, what, what's the language on all these stone you had, jars? You, you see three jars, and you approach them, and they're really interesting jars. None of you have seen it before. The writing is nothing you've ever seen, but it is... Um, a lot like dot matrix printing where 
I don't. It's not like Braille, but it's um, there's not a lot of curves in the writing, and it's very uniform and and um, geometric. Uh, there's no letters or any lettering you could um, that you're familiar with looking at it. Do any of them look like they've been opened recently? Most everything in this place has been like covered with dust. Yeah, those are they're covered with dust, and uh, the lids are on them. Uh, Euphoria, Probably, did they did they tell oh. you about Iris? They did, no, right? I th- they just left. <laughs> no, but no. We, we just mentioned that we know of the prototype. And yeah, and then you asked yeah, about it. you asked about the prototype, right? Is that correct? No, no. I didn't. Okay. No, I didn't. I was just asking about F- Felix, I guess. And you told them about what gurgle noise needs. Yes, yes, I a said that Gurgle Noise needs a new body. <laughs> okay, so would you guys, um, like... Prati, well, can I can I do something? Yeah, absolutely. Prati walks over and touches where he sees the, uh, you said it was like Braille? Uh, a little bit, but uh, it's just in relief in in the same way Braille kind of is. Does that make sense? But it's, okay, yeah. but it's dots Quick. and lines. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Prady touches it, and he sees the language, like, in the form that he can read. He's ca- he's casting comprehend languages. Okay. Um, excellent. I do, let me just look up the... Uh, I didn't know you had that, uh, which is Foil in the DM's plans. <laughs> no, this is actually going to save you a lot of time. Oh, nice. Good job, Proddy. <laughs> so, so it says, puzzle. for the duration, you understand the literal meaning of any spoken language that you hear, right? No, no, it's for an hour, and it, it's written language also, but I have to be touching it. Okay. And yeah. I can read like a whole page in so, a minute or something. Yeah. Um, spell doesn't decode secret messages in text or glyphs such as arcane sigil that isn't part of a written language. Um, let me look something up. Prady's just like... <laughs> messing with his glasses and it's like brushing dust off of it yeah so what you see on the jars are um, you see the the name on one of the jars, Martha. And on the second jar, you see a name that isn't familiar to you, but it is, uh, the name is, let me look at my notes from many weeks ago. Uh, you see Robbie Cronensteigel. Well, these the... I feel like, I feel like these names are familiar. Make, uh, some sort of check, or look up your... notes. It sounds like, it sounds like the... Was Martha the name of the woman we stayed with? We stayed in her house, and... Make an intelligence check. Uh, history check. If you have proficiency in history, make that check. If you don't, just make an intelligence check. What was the third name? I heard two of them. Uh, oh my god, it's it's just like the robot voice. Uh, <laughs> I had to get my charger. The third voice is Zahir. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I Brian rolled an eleven. Know. That's good enough for the first name. 
Martha is Max's assistant. Oh, right. Okay. And so the second one was, was Robbie Cronensteigel. You don't know that name. You don't know... Orson says, oh, that's my aunt, to Martha, when you say it's Martha. Uh, and um, I guess I'll make one for everyone. Brian, make one for Ashwin. Okay. Never mind. I just one? remembered they don't know that name. There's no way they know that name. Um, yeah. The third one is... Uh, Zahir. Zahir. And Crispy, you don't need to make a history check, but Ashwin should make a history check on that, as well as Orson. I feel like they told me about a Zahir, but I sure as hell don't remember. Oh, she got a 17. Go ahead and make a roll for it, then. You might know. They told you? You mean people in the group? People in the group, sure. yeah. Something about when they were hunting Alu and a flesh golem... That something in that story, I feel like, is when it came up, but I could be wrong. I got garbage. Okay. Seven, <laughs> 17 is good enough. Prodi, do you want to make one? Sure. Uh, le, uh, 12. Okay. Uh, Ashwin says, wasn't Zaheer one of the... Didn't you say that was one of the guardians? One of the... The, the keepers of Anista? One of the two, Suna and Zahir. And that, when she says that, you say, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we met them after we saved the the uh, orphanages and killed the, the... Oh, right, okay. The hags. So, what does that mean is in the jar? Do you check? I, I got. I gotta know. By the way, hold on. Let me check. Euphoria. They're just in there, and you see figures yeah. moving around. The figure on the ground has not moved. Um, are you just not doing anything? The um, wall doesn't open from this side, right? Not that like, you can really go back. To, okay. <laughs> if if you if you want to make a, do you want to investigate the wall? Or are you like going up to touch it? Yeah, I was just seeing if we could open the door again and speak with Euphoria. Yeah, so when you go door. up to the wall and you stick your hand through, you get pulled through to the other side. Oh. Oh, so it's oh, hey. <laughs> Hi. You want to go back? <laughs> yeah, uh, to be honest, I wasn't expecting to be back in this room, but good to know we can make it back. That's, can uh... I push him back into the other room then? Yep. With the token. All right, bye. <laughs> Just <Whoop. laughs> Do you still want to stay in this room? I feel like that's what she would do. She wouldn't want all of us to, like, she wouldn't want, like, okay. everybody to be on the one side. Like, someone should be here. Well, since Gurgle was my character, that's... he would he would be, like, he would be saying to you, <laughs> Euphoria, we need to find, is there anything in this room? Like, body-wise, is Felix in the next room? Is Is there... You know, is yeah. there a bugbear so body? Extra... Is there extra tokens on? Yeah, you're the, on the I model. Guess, like the map, then. Yeah. So you only aside from everybody that's over there and the figure on the floor. Is there anything else? So you just see the figure on the floor in that next room, on the model. Can I pick it up and make it vertical? No. Yeah. When you touch, horizontal? when you touch her figure your fingers go through it okay and there's nothing else in this room besides the map and the model correct or like the model correct you see yourself in there and you see the figures walking around you see figures of your new friends walking around in the next room so is there anything on the other side then like i can i still talk to them through the the little mist thing? When you, when you call out, you guys hear nothing. And they don't respond to your calling out. About 30 seconds after that, I pop back through like, whoop! I, I just wanted to get my broom. Hold on one second before you push me back through again. 
And I walk well, over to my broom. Well, you can't hear me when I, when you guys are in the other room, but is there anything else over there? Oh, were you talking? No, we couldn't hear you in there. Uh, there was a, there's an operating table and all sorts of, of used implements and instruments like saws. It's honestly, it's it's terrifying. Do you uh, mind right... staying here while I take a look? And then you uh, can just sure. pull me back I'm not through. doing anything in there. I mean, I was about to open a jar, and frankly, it might have been a bad idea, so I should... I should stay here. I'll I'll hang out in this room for a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I walk over and I push her token into the other room. <laughs> so you, what does it feel like? Feel when weird? You get yeah. It feels like somebody's gently uh well unless he does it like violently. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like I do it's it just quickly, but not violently. Fighting. Yeah, it just feels like somebody's shoving you at a, at a consistent velocity. Uh <laughs> and um yeah it's just like your vision kind of go goes fast really like it just whoop, as you're passing through some sort of barrier there's no physical feeling to that and then you come to a stop and you kind of right balance yourself and you're in that new room and you see exactly what uh i described before everyone make a perception check in that room ashwin included I can't roll over a 10, apparently. Uh, 13. 14. 15 for Ashwin. Thank God for the little things. Um, <laughs> Literally, she's tiny. Mm -hmm. Ashwin goes, Hey, th that corner of the room looks weird. And she goes over and starts like prodding it, roll an investigation check. 17. You, uh, she goes over there, and those of you in the room see her kind of get her tiny, uh, cute little mouse fingers in some sort of uh, crack or something, and she looks like she's exerting effort uh, on a fleshy part of the wall, kind of an a bulging part of the wall and she looks like she's trying to pull something. You want a hand with that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I can get it. I'm real strong. But yeah, sure, if you want to help. So make a uh, strength check with advantage, Ashwin. Just straight strength? Yep. Oh, that's fine. Uh, mod 20. Not a problem. Uh, Ashwin and Euphoria, you're able to pull it open, and behind this this fleshy part of, of the Kraken is like a little cubby hole, and there is this metallic figure that Euphoria, you've seen... All of you have seen periodically, if you've been in Anista or a major city, uh, Crispy, you've seen it in uh, Vera Mall. Uh, it's a warforged body. And it's not dissimilar to uh, what you've seen walking around, the remnants of the war between the North and the South. Uh, these are warforged that Felix and his partner, Avner Bree, created and sold to both sides to fight against each other. Uh, and now there's some walking around with... Some of them have scars from war, but they're all sentient as far as you can tell. And this one is not moving and its chest is open. There's a little compartment open and it's got like a circular uh, empty spot in the center. Uh, what do you want to do with Iris, Prati? Um, I, I guess I just keep looking around the room for uh, the control ring, or okay. just investigation something. Investigation that... check. Oh yeah! Uh, investigation twenty-five. You find a in the back of one of uh, these drawers you're looking for. You find a weird-looking tool that um, has some weird runes written in it. And um, it looks like kind of a mini uh, 
crowbar with a little crowbar uh with a little um i love when i accidentally stumble upon shit like that uh and i don't even realize it and people point it out and i'm just like what are they talking about uh it took me a second to find. just makes me feel real smart um yeah you find a weird looking tool um that just looks like a crowbar with some added zhuzh Okay, cool. Um, Probably's like, hmm. Uh, Orson standing over Iris and it's just. So goes, should we like, should we just break her then? Ashwin's like, are you sure she looks like she's still alive? No, I'm gonna just. I don't know. What do you think? This is like a, it's like a crowbar, or just a bar to me. Uh, it's I'm like gonna... it's like this long. Okay. So less of a bar, a more fi- like a, a fine rod. implement. He just goes over to Iris and he just touches her with it. Nothing happens, but her eyes are still twitching in the same way. Mm. She like... looks alive, but kind of broken. He touches some of the runes on it. Like Make an broken. Arcana check. Twenty-four. You think these are runes of abjuration, um, but you don't get the feeling that they can be activated just by themselves. Like the like the like the tool needs to be in use to mm-hmm. make it effective. Yeah. And Euphoria, um, you're seeing Prati like look over this construct, and you look a little closer. It's a very well done construct that has v- very hard to notice seams on it, and um, oh, it just lo- it's the most well done construct you've ever seen. Um, is there anything? Uh, Gurgle Noise will say, why, why are you so interested in this construct? Uh, Roddy just pulls out one of the pieces of the rod and he just goes, caw, caw. Why are you cawing? I could hear you talk earlier. <laughs> I'm just still not used to hearing my, the sound of my own thoughts. Um, Iris had, has a piece of the rod of seven parts. And, like, uh, <clears throat> so it's a powerful artifact. Why has she been here the whole time, or like, no, I have no idea how she got here. She was with us. Why didn't we you went just through take a port it from her? Well, <laughs> I did, I tried. She tried doesn't look l- very strong. She's, I don't know how strong she is, but she is the fastest thing I've ever, I've ever seen in my life. Oh, cool. she sliced me up. Before I could even register that, so she's like a spy. She's She's a spy. She's a killer. She's an assassin. She's an assassin. She's an assassin. Ashwin. Yep. This is the first pro. The first Warforged Felix built. She's the prototype. Cool. Oh. So Prati takes that little crowbar and he he tries sticking it in one of of Iris's seams. On her, to like pry, what, what part of on the... her leg? On her leg, and he tries to like pry open her leg. Uh, yeah, you pry it open, and um, it starts to give, and the runes start to light up. Ah, all right. Well, he. Uh, you know where just... the rod is. Yeah, so I, I go into. Ashwin her... says she's still alive. You're you're performing surgery on a live creature. Um, Dave is like, I've been trying to get this damn construct for so long, and these moral people are getting in my way. Is it possible we could, uh, oh, man? Is there is there anything else in the well? Let me first just pry open her torso first. So you go to find a seam on her torso, and um. 
all of the clothes underneath it looks like her chest piece is one piece that can you saw her when you first met her and she took you down to her basement apartment you saw her like change her face and this looks like it's a similar type of thing where she could change she's an assassin she told you so it makes sense that she could change her body shape and all these things and you find a seam and you boop, pop it open and you pull it open yep and Orson's totally Ashwin we have to see what's wrong with her to, to see if we have to open her up to see what's wrong with her this is wrong her <laughs> eyes are twitching we're gonna she could be surgery. in pain we're doing surgery on someone who may be feeling pain <laughs> can't feel better without pain that we sounds like figure Orson. out we have to figure out uh, what's going on first before we decide what to do and uh, when you pull open the chest cavity, you see a similar piece of rod that um, looks exactly like what you're looking for. Um, you've studied the broken parts, the broken sides of the two rods you do have, the two pieces you do have so well that you can instantly see that that rod in her chest that's connected to various wires and uh, alchemical tubes, uh, the, the broken piece in her chest would fit perfectly to those parts of your, your broken rod. Can I do some sort of like insights check or I don't know what the, cause like I'm, I'm technically like a little bit of a tinkerer. Yeah. Can I do something where I can, uh, try to just figure out, like, is there anything else in the room that could replace the the power source? Make an ar It would be an Arcana check. Are you proficient in Arcana? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's 20... Uh, 22. Pretty good. Um, you haven't... You investigated really damn well, and you didn't find anything of that power you know that the other warforged you've seen around are powered by refined crystals some that you know is proprietary and very well guarded uh secret as to how to refine it so you think you would need an equally powerful magical artifact there's definitely nothing in the room that you think is that powerful um okay so Prady just turns to Ashwin he goes Ashwin look like we work for Felix right now I'm just gonna you said take... you were gonna lie to him about it we were just gonna lie and not tell well, him. he he wants us he wants us to kill her so let's let's this is gonna kill her no I know but let's go back to Felix and then see what he says like let's I because I mean, I still want to take the piece of the rod, but she's a machine. Like, I can put it back depending on what Felix says. Let's Felix find out why Felix gonna wants to kill her. Well, I mean, if he says he wants to destroy her and we work for him, I mean, do you want to find, do you want to get on the dark side of Felix? Maybe the villagers can help. There are apprentices of Felix there. They love Iris. Maybe they can bring her back or have another power source. I would be willing to try that. Uh, Ashwin says, they wouldn't let you take anything out of her. They wouldn't let you change her. We could just say that we found her like this. <laughs> all, all the characters are starting to sound the same. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ashwin sounds up here. She's a lot higher. <laughs> um... Yeah, I don't. I don't know if we can get one of those one of those golems slash constructs to come in here, because they consider this like a holy place. So I'm not even sure I could get them in here to try that. You know that we could bring her back. We yeah. could take it now and bring her body back and leave the leave her body with them. So Euphoria, what are you doing? You're by that closet. Uh, yeah, by where that warforged body is. Yeah. So what is it? What does it look like? Is it just like metal? Yeah, it's like, me metal like plated. Um, 
just very utilitarian. Uh, and Gurgle Noise says, Are you... Excuse me. Are you thinking <laughs> of... Putting... Yeah. I think so. I think I'm going to put this ring right, right in this sucker. She's a Warforged too. You, you, you want to be her? I don't know. She's an assassin. <laughs> Is that what you want? I don't know. I just want to. I just want to. I just want to be able to shoot a, a bow. Yes, I understand. You'll definitely that. be able to shoot a bow if you're in <laughs> Iris's body. But yeah, so we have two choices here. You have that body that's currently lying on the floor. Over here. I don't and know. Then, what like to do. I would explain. I I explain what it looks like to gurgle noise. And they're saying that she can change her appearance. So if you really wanted to, you could look like your old self again. I'm assuming. <laughs> and uh, maybe then, I could, but she, she's shorter than I was. Can she change her size? You guys don't know. You didn't see her do that. The only thing that changed when she'd change her face or any other parts was her like disposition and her posture and... Stuff like that. I say I take the piece of the rod and then we take her body back to the villagers and let them decide what to do with her because they consider her like a deity. Have you tried so... to take her out of the room? No. We're, what do you, you've been with us the whole time. No, he hasn't. No, we haven't... We've been in the other room. We, yeah. They were in the <laughs> other room for a little bit. Well, okay. Well, Prati tries to like pick up, pick up Iris. Uh, you pick her up and you start to see, um, the walls get a little more moist. Oh, <laughs> put her down. Uh, put I put her, her I put her back down. Okay. <laughs> Did that Great. change anything? Did it go back to normal? Yep. I mean, well, it still looks as through. moist as it just got. It hasn't increased. I think uh, this place is going to flood if we take her out of here. Um, do we have a quick, quick way of getting out of here? Euphoria, you make the decision. I, this is, I'm not smart. I'm, I don't know what to do. All right. Well, okay. So it's a ring shaped depression in the other, uh, it's in just the like other a little, we just found. um, circular spherical depression where a humanoid heart would be. Okay. Well, Gurgle Noise, we're going to give this a shot. I don't really want to put you in her in her body. I don't think that'll be the best fit for you. Uh, so then, this is going to get weird because I'm taking the ring off, so I'm not going to be able to hear you. Uh, so As you're kind of putting uh, it off, you're hearing... Oh, this is gonna suck, but it's kind of cutting in and out, like somebody's unplugging speaker phones. Yeah, yeah. So I put it on. It's like, all right, you need to relax. You need to remain calm. All right, and then like ripping a bandaid off, she like rips the ring off her finger and then puts it on the or in that depression in that warforge. You don't see. You put it in and you're looking and nothing happens. Maybe it needs a little bit of time. You wait. How long do you wait? Uh, yeah. Like two minutes. Nothing. I'll wait three more minutes. Like anything. N nothing as you're waiting. What are you guys doing? Sweeping. <laughs> you can go into the other room, Crispy. No, no. The, I said I was waiting. The model room is half swept. <laughs> what? Crispy's so you're not interested? Crispy's not interested? He's very interested, but he said he was going to stay in the room. Okay. He said he was going to hang back, so he so he's hanging back, keeping an eye out in the dark, dark room. Can't see a thing. Orson walks out through the through the wall, and he goes to the model as you're sweeping, and he takes your figure, and he pushes it through, <laughs> and, and then he pushes himself through. Oh! <laughs> I guess Orson felt that... uh. 
This room also needed some sweeping. <laughs> well, so, this we're... have we looked in the jars yet? Did anyone open the jars? Yeah, you guys haven't. You guys kind of stepped a away from the jars. Because I've been I've been thinking about them since I walked out of this room, and so I walk right over the jars and I pop the lid of Zahir and I look inside. You see a some murky liquid and make a perception check. Fourteen. You think it's part of a brain in there? It's not circular. Is that a, is that a fucking brain? And I take it and I upend it on the table. It's definitely a part of a brain, and the liquid is very viscous, thick, and murky, and it's definitely part of a brain. Parati opens the one that says Martha. You think you see a brain more rounded Your this time. Your friend is into some really freaky shit. <laughs> oh, your friend Parati, with Felix? He really is. Parati opens the one that's Rob Cronin Steigel or something. Yep, you see that one too. Same thing. Okay. Huh. Hmm. I, I go ahead and I gingerly uh, try to scoop up Zaheer's brain and I dump it in the jar with Martha. And then I take that jar and I stick it in my bag of holding. Okay. And well, then I didn't... take the other bag, the other jar, and I about... do Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know why we would need brains. I There's a lot of weird stuff in here. I'm just going to take it and see. Uh, Which see ones do you have Felix again? Was up to. Uh, all three, but Martha and Zaheer are now in the Martha jar. Okay. Since I dumped all the liquid out of the Zaheer jar. Um, five minutes. Can you handle that, Jess? You can t yeah. you can use the restroom if you need to. Yeah, no, I just have something I need to do after okay. this, and that's why um, I was asking. Yeah, so... Five minutes in game, or out of game, we have to finish this up. What do you want to do, Prati? Um, I go, Ashwin, uh, you seem to be the only person in the Big Bed Fellows who really has a problem with me doing this. She's not, she's not and... looking at you, and she's kind of partially turned her back to you. I wish there was another way. I personally just have to, I need this artifact, okay? Like, my, my celestial, um, benefactor is, is telling me to go get this stuff okay i just have faith that uh some good will come of this um i'm not really sure how as of right now her but... tail is very agitated swiping back and forth and you've seen this happen when she's just very agitated and angry uh yeah so um, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with our relationship, Ashwin, but I got to do this. And he, he starts trying to remove the, the rod from, from Iris. Yeah. Piece you, of the rod. You just start on, on, it seems like things are connected by some sort of magic, but it, it's, it's almost like pulling apart magnets. Um, there's some tension there, but it releases once you apply enough tension and you pull it out and the twitching of her eyes, the whole time you're doing this, they're moving, and as you're prodding her hot heart, uh, her eyes twitch faster and faster until they stop twitching when you have the piece of the rod. All right. And I put it in my cloak. Okay. Separate from the others? Um, okay, do I have to roll like a... Uh roll anything to put them together or like how to, how am I going to tell you how to we'll, put them together? We'll do that. We'll say that we'll do that out, out of game. Let's just okay. um, wrap up Euphoria and Gurgle. What do you want to do Euphoria? Gurgle is like well I guess that leaves one thing, right? Well, wait. So the ring is still in the Word Forge and it's been sitting there for five minutes and nothing has happened? Correct. Euphoria will take the ring and put it back on and, I guess, like, reattune to it. 
Yeah, it, it we'll say it's just you have the connection. It's it. Yeah. So you can Did hear you him. Did you feel any different when you were in the? No, I, I felt the same. There? Oh, well then. Uh, maybe we need something else. I think but... you should just put me connect, put me in her heart. <laughs> we can give that a shot. So yeah, Euphoria will do that next. And what what's the worst that could possibly happen? I don't know. <laughs> I, it can't be worse than the 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 shrunken dry heart. Yeah, I I think that was a low that you will uh not achieve again. <laughs> um, so all right, hang on a second, and then Euphoria will just like rip the ring off and then put it in Iris's mechanical body. You start connecting various wires. Prodi uh, helps if you ask, I assume. Yeah, Prodi yes. helps. And um, you, see, you nothing happens, and then all of a sudden her eyes start to move, and this weird voice comes out of her mouth that says... Euphor Euphoria, did it work? <sighs> Euphoria is so happy that she immediately starts crying. I, <laughs> uh, I feel lighter, but how do I assassin do assassin things? <laughs> and and uh, she gets up and starts looking at. He's. He, I don't even know what the proper pronoun is right now. I, th I think it's still he. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh he starts looking at the the construct body he's now in and um well crispy just says well friend need to start assassinating mm -hmm. and hands him his bow and uh he takes it and uh when he grabs it a dagger comes out of his forearm and just shoots randomly and he goes oh that's cool Okay, Gurgle, the... we're going to have to, you know, think before we do stuff. <laughs> and the dagger shoots Read the instructions and hits first. a part of the wall and uh, disappears on impact. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we're going to have to... Also, the walls are getting more moist. Yeah, we, oh. we probably need to go. Yeah, this isn't a good vibe. Uh, I believe the lab wanted us to get the prototype out. I say we pick her up and then. Uh, well, I mean, I can. I pick she's... her up. Oh wait, no, you're, you're you're you can move yourself now. We don't have to pick her up anymore. Gurgle just uh, starts like running. running. He runs. He's got really the fast. idea. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we're running through the wall. Yep. I guess. You guys all make it through and make it out of. Uh, the main body of the squid as you're leaving you hear the voice go thank you for visiting and the light has been following you as you're leaving and uh as you're leaving the last translucent part you see the faint glow of 30 foot tall piercing teeth and giant mouth and dark eyes just as you're leaving the main body of the kraken and the cra the kraken main body is also filling with water behind you that's what we'll leave it mm. you guys made it wow, out wow all right good stuff all right all right all right <laughs> let's go around and plug whatever you need to plug we'll start with you jess and you can get going uh yeah hi i'm jess pack i was playing euphoria <laughs> Um, a couple of projects I'm working on, I'm actually going to be starting a podcast uh, or a show soon. Uh, it'll be called Three Flings. Uh, basically, uh, I will be playing Euphoria, and two of my other friends will be going through a campaign that strings together um, all of the um, modules in the Uncaged anthology. And um, so that's what we're going to be doing. So we have to wait until the fourth volume of the, uh, anthology is out so we can make that campaign. Um, I'm also in the process of writing, uh, two more tier four modules as well. Um, I can't say more about what they're about, um, but they are in the works. Um, but yeah, 
thank you very much for having me on. I really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, Thanks, Jeff. It was great to play Gurgle Noise again and interact with Euphoria. Uh, Dave, you're muted. My name is Dave Roderick. You can find me at uh, Instagram or Twitter, DRod3. And that's about it. Okay. Brian. That's me. And you can't find me anywhere. I'm just here to play D&D. Excellent. I'm Jake Friday. You can find me on Twitter at Jake Friday, Instagram at Jake of the Friday. Follow Venture Ventures on Twitter and Instagram as well. It is simply at Venture Ventures. And there will be no episode next week. I will be at D&D Live. If you're there, say hi. And uh, <laughs> really convincing there, Jake. I think you're going to get a lot of people approaching you with that one. I just like I feel weird saying that. I not because you would be approaching me, but because <laughs> it's more of a personal thing. Anyways, I'm very affable. I like to think. So please, if you'd like to say hi, I will not. Uh, I can vouch for it. He's very affable. You're nailing it. You're just... Brian, am I affable? <laughs> you're, you're quite affable. Okay. He is. Fantastic. He really is. <laughs> uh, so we'll be on a two-week break, and we'll be back after next weekend. Uh, I'm not sure what date that is, but yes, we will be. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Uh, be good to yourself and be good to others. Thank you so much. Bye. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs>